All right, look, Grant, uh, you got the floor. I just wanted to ask priests, seems to have a very good understanding of Galatians, but don't you think there's something else in addition to forgiveness of judgment of death that Jesus was propagating? That's like looking at the surface of a, what do you call those things in the cold water? You only see the top, but the major part of that object is, is underwater. You talking about a uh, glacier, nigga? Yeah, a glacier. His description of what Jesus was forgiving what Galatians is saying is, no, you're not going to be condemned to death for that sin. But that's the surface. That's true. But there's a lot more that the gospel and Jesus came to do uh, with this New Testament. Hey, he Lebrun, came to give you new time. life. Hey, hey LeBron, I got my notepad right now. Oh, I got shit, a pen. Hey, LeBron, I'm ready alert. Yeah. 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 Ready alert. Listen, Listen I got my notepad too. Wait. Come on, LeBron, teach that shit. Come on, man. come on, come on, come on now. Come on, yeah, come on. Jesus, come on. Jesus came to do a lot more than not condemn people for sin. He was sent by God for a more profound job to die for redemption of Israel's sin. Not so that they would not be condemned to death for certain sins, but so that they could inherit as covenant heirs under a new covenant, the promised gift of eternal life so that when they die, they should be resurrected and receive a new spiritual body. I mean, that's talked about in the New Testament a lot in John chapter six, six verse 40, John chapter seven, verse 37 through 39, Acts chapter one, verse four and five. This gift of eternal life that Jesus said, he was sent by God to give Israel and that gift being eternal life. Israel would receive by faith by being baptized by the Holy Ghost, which he commanded in Acts chapter one, verses four and five, right before he ascended to heaven. He had a meeting with his disciples. He had been dead for 40 days, but he remained on earth and taught his disciples about the kingdom of God. Right before he left to go to, to heaven, he had a meeting with them. That meeting is recorded in Acts chapter one, for verse, verse one through five, where he met with them and commanded that they not leave Jerusalem until they received the promise that he had been teaching for the last three years, that God was sent to those that believed on him by faith. They had never been told how they would receive this promise. But before he went to heaven and sat on the right hand of God, he said, don't leave Jerusalem. I'm about to go to heaven. Don't leave Jerusalem until you receive the promise from God that I've been telling you about for the last three years. You've been baptized by water, but you shall be baptized by the Holy Ghost, at which time, your spirit shall be quickened so that when you die you shall be resurrected like you saw me being resurrected and remaining among you no, for Legrand, the last 40 Legrand, years well, Legrand, oh, hold on hold on look yeah. okay what are you talking about you're right to it man all right oh, are you saying that we just have to live? hold on hold on i knew this would happen man all right look right get right to the point if you don't mind like just go through the scriptures you try to uh uh refute or go against that we bring it out and let uh, one of the brothers talk to you about it okay you, you're doing too much talking get right to a point and what your stance is on it and let's deal with it all right please yeah everything i've been saying is is merely quoting scripture so acts chapter 1 verse 4 and 5 y'all want somebody want to read that and tell me what you think about that acts 1 through 4 and 5 where jesus had this meeting with his disciples and he commanded them Okay, hold on, something. hold on, hold on. Let's read it, and um, you can give the sense, and brothers can uh, deal with you on that. Uh, Danielle, are you there? Is there any brothers on stage I can read? Yeah, I'm here. It's a lot, kid. Nah, you're good, King. Okay, um, you please read for him and let him give the sense, and let's see if we see it the same way. Can a brother call the scripture again? Acts chapter 1. Verse 4 and 5. This is the book of Acts, chapter 1 and verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. Yes, that is the commandment now what do you think the promise is 
I can keep talking, but if somebody got a question, the promise in, in verse four is the promise that he made for the last three years that will be received by those men born from the promise seed of Abraham by faith. God would give it to them if they actually believe by faith. They will be given the promise of eternal life when they're baptized by the Holy Ghost. That's what the promise is in verse four. And we see that this promise was actually fulfilled after Jesus left and went and sat on the right hand of God. The disciples remained in Jerusalem as they were commanded by Jesus. And we see in Acts chapter two, verses one through four, God fulfilling the promise that Jesus had told them he would send. When they were in the upper room, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. They were baptized by the Holy Ghost and uh, received the promise of eternal life. Does anybody have any question about that? A different interpretation of those scriptures? We don't, I personally don't know. I, I understand, I follow what you were saying. I don't know where we're trying to go with the point. So I, I don't have no questions personally. I don't know where we're going with that. That's why Ari was saying when he said, I don't, I don't know where we were going with that. But I do understand what you were saying, though. I understand what you were saying. So, I guess y'all don't really give any credit to those scriptures because it says right. what it says say that we don't give but credit to the scriptures like we i we understood what you were saying i don't how do we not give credit i don't get it do y'all do y'all agree with it or disagree with it well what would see that's 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 what Ari was trying to get to I'm asking you, I'm asking you all. You, we're, we're trying to tell you we can't agree or disagree because we don't know what the point you're trying to make is. I, th I think that's what we're looking I can't, I, I understand what you're saying. But what was your, what was your <laughs> ultimate, what, what, we're trying, what Ari was trying to say to you, what is your ultimate Point that you're trying to prove we understood what you said you have to go through the whole thing again but what was the point the ultimate point if you could uh make it succinctly like in a sentence okay, two. one sentence what's yeah, the point in one sentence one sentence unless you obey the commandment of god that he gave to jesus that jesus spoke in acts chapter one verses four and five the acts of the apostles The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs being seen by them during forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Which you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Unless you obey that commandment of God and be baptized by the Holy Ghost, you shall not be resurrected after death. You shall not be resurrected after death. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. And I will raise him up at the last day. And 
I will raise him up at the last day. And receive a new spiritual body that will allow you to enter the kingdom of heaven. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. In other words, if you don't obey that commandment in Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, you shall experience eternal death after you die in his flesh. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law, and the strength of sin is the law, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So what is being baptized by the Holy Ghost? What, what, what is that? I know it's in Acts chapter 2, but what, just if you could describe it to me in words, what is that? Well, it's described in very clear and simple words in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together, and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Parthians, and Medes, and Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, in Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya, about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed, and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, I will pour out in those days of my spirit. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Which you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, for the promise is unto you and to your children, for the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are afar off. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. 
Cornelius the Centurion, a just man, one who fears God and has a good reputation among all the nation of the Jews, was divinely instructed by a holy angel to summon you to his house and to hear words from you. To him all the prophets witness that, through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. But what that actually is, is the quickening of your spirit. Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. But some man will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain, it may chance of wheat or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. But some man will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. That is the born-again experience that Jesus told Nicodemus in John chapter 3 is necessary for any man to see and in, or enter the kingdom of heaven. John 3 there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. He was too embarrassed to come to Jesus in the daytime because of his status. So he came, he snuck around at nighttime and came and saw Jesus and they had a conversation you all are all familiar with in John chapter 3. And Jesus told Nicodemus, unless a man is born again in the spirit, he shall not see or enter the kingdom of heaven. And Nicodemus... Look, Ryan, I, I apologize for interrupting you in your speech, but I have to admit, and please, pardon me, pardon me, Legrand. No, that's Unlike all right. Daniel, yeah, I like no, people no, interrupting no, me. No, Don't no, worry no, about no, that. No, no, it's good, it's good. Unlike Daniela Sharpar, I just a warm Ari Joel Childe. I'm slow. I'm slow. I admit it. I'm slow. So yeah, you know, I admit it. I admit it. I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say that I'm slow. So I, I don't get things as quickly as they do. So when you say about uh, the quickening of the spirit, like, can you? What, what is it? What, like, make, break that down for somebody slow and stupid like me. What, is, what is that quickening of the spirit? What does it look like? What, what is that? Well, you you can't really see it. It is a spiritual transformation that happens inside of you, just like circumcision of the heart. 
is used as an analogy of something that happens on the inside of a man. It is not something that you can see or touch with your physical hand, but it's something that happens internally. Now, let me try and give you an example. If you go to the morgue, you're going to see a lot of dead people in the morgue. The only difference between those that's flesh and rigor mortis. We know what it is. That's, that's rigor mortis. We no, know what it is. No, I'm, the only yeah, difference I'm between those dead bodies that you see lying in the morgue and you walking around alive, you have a living spirit inside right, of you. The dead bodies don't, but they move that, too. That's called rigor mortis. We know what it is. The dead, the dead body in the freaking. In the freaking funeral home that gets up, stands up, they raise their arms, it's called rigor mortis. There's no body in there, but we, we already know what that is. Come on with it, Legrand. Yeah, but the, we but try the to rigor come mortis. To us, I'm still lost. I'm still lost. Yeah, come on with it. But we're just, just trying to accept what's being said. The rigor mortis is, is, a, is a reflex of a muscle. It is a movement that takes place because of the physical nature of some muscles. But what we do, running, jumping, talking, seeing, hearing, thinking, that is the result of this spirit inside of us that's living. When that spirit leaves, the body falls down and is a limp piece of meat. But the spirit that gives that body life continues to live. That spirit also is going to see a end. It is not eternal. It's going to see a end one day, unless God gives it eternal life. And God has sent his son, Jesus, to give you the opportunity to have your spirit born again. That's what Jesus told Nicodemus. No man shall see or enter the kingdom of heaven unless he's born again in the spirit. This spiritual rebirth is what we see Jesus telling his disciples in Acts chapter 1 verses 4 and 5. Don't leave Jerusalem until you receive the promise of eternal life that I've been teaching for the last three years. You'll receive this spiritual gift when you're baptized by the Holy Ghost that John the Baptist was talking about. Nobody had been baptized by the Holy Ghost. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. My, nobody knew how it would look. In Acts chapter 2, look around. In Acts chapter 2, when they received this promise, this gift, what does it look like when they were speaking in tongues? What does that look like? What, 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 is, what does that look like? For me, who's slow, how does that look? And what were they doing? Imagine a group of men standing up, speaking a whole lot of different foreign languages. That's not their own language. That's You're right about that. Like. I want to see what you were going to say. Okay. But I still don't know. Hey, Ari, help me. Anybody help me. What is the point that we're trying to get to here? Why am I, I'm, I feel like I'm slow. I don't get it. Y'all okay. put it in the chat. Okay. What, because, what is yep. the, what is LeGrant trying to show us? Like, I don't get it. I'm slow. Everybody else is on mute. They don't want to help me. Then y'all right. help me. Uh, real quick. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Help me out, Ari. Help me out. What, right. Um, uh, Danielle, I'm going to give it right to you. Um, I, I think he was... Uh, okay, so LeGrant, right? When I came yeah. up to you earlier and I told you to, like, get to it, I kind of wanted you to just lay your premise and your stance. Right? Like, be very clear with it, because you're kind of all over the place. Now, okay, let me ask you this. In Acts uh, 1, that's where you were, right? 4 and 5? So, yep. you're saying that we have to keep that commandments that Christ gave to the disciples at that time? Is that what you're saying? Exactly. That commandment had never been given to them because it was not the time for them to know what they would need to do. And what they needed to do, what he told them, just stay here and, okay, and, real, until real, God sends you something. Well, Jesus, how is he going to look? When is he going to send it? He didn't tell them anything. It was totally fulfilled because of their faith, because they believed and they obeyed his commandment. Just like God gave Moses commandments, laws and commandments that hey, required... Let's, 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 yeah. let, let's, not, let's not compound points, okay? Let's just okay, no, what you All right, let's stick to this. All right, let's take okay, this. Okay, so, so for, okay, would you say that what was written there in Acts, the first 
chapter 4th and 5th verse does that pertain to us today even though it was being spoken to those to the disciple at that time does it pertain to us also today do we have to yeah. do we have to follow that hold on do we have to follow that process to obtain eternal life what's being said there yeah that was the whole purpose for god sending jesus to israel israel is still on the planet earth living in the flesh and blood that commandment is still relevant and intact today for us to receive this promise of eternal life right so so again I, let, because i wanted to be very clear and priest uh hopefully i'm helping a little bit here i was just in the midst of doing something but i did hear you calling me um, and I, I think Daniela was going to add to the build, and Daniela is pretty sharp when it comes to clearing things up a little bit. So, LeGrand, are those, again, listen to my question. What was written there in, in Acts 1, 4, and 5, uh, that's the only commandments given by Christ that we have to follow to obtain eternal life? There's no other commandments we have to follow, yes or no? No, Jesus only gave that commandment to his disciples pertaining to what they must do in order to receive the promise. Okay, said, so that's he, that, so, the grant. Let's do it one point at a time. I heard what you just said. So it was given to them at that time, correct? Right. Okay, does that commandment apply to us today that we're not there? Does that apply to us? Yes or no? Yeah, I just, I just answered that about a minute ago. Yeah. Okay, it, oh, so that applies to us too? That's the third time I'm answering, yeah. Okay, Daniela, could you read so, that? Oh, sorry, Father Priest, I you. No, no, I was going to ask him, do we got to speak in tongues today? Do we have to have this, that, that, um, the evidence of speaking in tongues today, LeGrand? Yes or no, before we give it to Daniela? Just yes or no? Do we have to do that? Jesus, Jesus didn't die so that we can receive the promise of speaking in tongues. He died so that we can receive the promise of eternal life. And of evidence course. that you have received the spiritual promise of eternal life is evidence uh -huh. when the Spirit speaks in an unknown language. So, as, so right. As, as so, I want to get to. So, so, you have to be able to speak in an unknown language, a language that you were not formally trained in. The evidence of that, that you could receive that eternal life, is you being able to do that. So, um, are you able to do that, Grant? It's not you that speak with your mouth. I didn't, I didn't no, but I'm I saying, but I'm saying, I, I understand your question. I understand your question. It is not me as a man using my mouth and my tongue speaking in a language. It's the spirit that comes inside of you and speaks through you. It comes out of your mouth. Your mouth and your tongue is not moving. It is the wind coming out of your body as the spirit is speaking. It's not you. You don't have control over it, really. So 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 that 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 happens to you. You're able to speak in a tongue that your your body and your mouth doesn't have control over, and that's what you do. And that's the right. evidence of the that's, spirit that the spirit is on you. Correct? Yeah, because as the scripture said, it, oh. as the spirit gives utterance. Uh, as the spirit okay. gives utterance, not Grant you. Does the same thing. He does the same thing that you guys see, um, that you guys see in the Christian church every Sunday. He does hop a lot of I know what the Christian church. I know what the Christian church. It's the same Christian thing. Christian church don't do what I do. No, no doubt. No no doubt. Doubt. Christian I church don't do what I do. I agree no, with you. Christian church. Hey, hey, real quick. Oh, hold on, Legrand. Hold on. Hold on. All right. So, uh, priest, um, of course you're gonna have to build, but at some point we do have to give the edification dealing with speaking uh from a different tongue tongue and speaking in tongue we'd be at some point yeah. but uh yeah are you you yeah, know I, I i don't know if i'm gonna be here for that but there's enough uh qualified purpose on the stage to give that i just want, I just want to get to I, I just want to know what he teaches so now we all know i know daniela wanted to say something i bought i bought wanted to say something so yeah your man the grampy's hobbalabalusha hoopalabalasha and all the rest. You know, see, what you just said is what the Christian people do. I don't do that. That's that's not that's not what I'm you, talking about. You that's, do that's something. what you hear. That's what you hear in most Christian churches. That's not what I'm talking about. That is okay, not LeGrand. from God. Okay, okay, Legrand. Okay, so that means so that what that what you what you're telling what you're telling us, Legrand. I'm gonna give it to you right now. I promise I'll be real short. What you're telling us, Legrand, is the Spirit comes over you because I did hear you. I'm I'm gonna be fair. I did hear you and say that people that speak in tongues in Acts chapter 2, they were speaking in languages that they weren't, you know, they, they didn't learn coming up, but they were able to speak it and people were able to understand. 
So what you're saying is the spirit will come over you and whatever you're speaking is a language that's already on earth that somebody somewhere would understand. Right. I would love the next time that that spirit jumps on you, we no. need to film it. I want you, I want, no, no. we need to, no, 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 A. LeGrant, hold on, I'm gonna give you the fort right now because the book of Corinthians is clear. If you, if the spirit jumps on you and you do that, there needs to be somebody in the audience that could interpret it. So there needs to be somebody that speaks that language. The Most High does not deal with the Most High is not the author of confusion. So if the spirit jumps on you and you speak it in an unknown tongue, meaning you you don't you don't you weren't formally uh, raised to speak that language, but the spirit jumps on you, you speak it. There's supposed to be somebody in the audience that understands what you said. I need for that to be filmed and show me that you were speaking in Swahili, Haitian Creole, Spanish, whatever it is. I just want to know that, that 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 that's real because I'm telling you that the languages that you think it's just speaking, <laughs> it's not real languages at all. You're doing the same things that Christians do. I'm telling you that. And then I yield. I know Danielle. Yeah, I already want to say something. Hey, priest. Hey, priest. Well, what, what you just you said. Know. What you just said oh, no, is real evidence of your you misunderstanding, second, brother. You can get it in a second. I just wanted to let the priest know that um, there is a sister, Nakia, in the audience. She will be able to interpret it when he does make that video. That's true. Nakia can she show because was Nakia was a Christian first, so she do speak the Habalabalusha. So she does she show do. Bless her heart. Right, Go ahead, so, Nakia. So, hey, hey, so let me, me, uh, me hey, hey, look you gotta you gotta interpret her in the audience, man. <laughs> I gotta let you know that your position you just stated is absolutely incorrect. What you quoted in Corinthians has nothing to do with what's spoken of and written in Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5 and 2. No, I understand, I understand uh, that, but yeah. what I'm saying No, you don't understand. No, you understand because... Those rules and regulations that pertain to the gift of speaking in tongues you quoted from Corinthians does not pertain to receiving the promise of the eternal life, the eternal life, the eternal life. Eternal life that Grant, hold on, I'm gonna give you the fort right now. Because the book of Corinthians is clear. If you if the spirit jumps on you and you do that, there needs to be somebody in the audience that could interpret it. So there needs to be somebody that speaks that language. The most high does not deal with the most high is not the author of confusion. So if the spirit jumps on you and you speak it in an unknown tongue, meaning you you don't you don't you weren't formally uh, raised to speak that language, but the spirit jumps on you, you speak it, there's supposed to be somebody in the audience that understands what you said. I need for that to be filmed and show me that you were speaking in Swahili, Haitian Creole, Spanish, whatever it is. That yeah. Jesus commanded. But tongues is... No, what I'm saying, let me... But, uh, but tongues is... Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm going to give it to you. I, I promise I'm not going to... No, you I, keep I, giving I, it to me. I'm trying to explain I your, promise, your, your I error. Promise, I promise, no, I promise. No, I promise I'll only be 30 seconds. Let's read Corinthians 2. Mute your mic and hang on a second, man. It's Corinthians 2, verse 4 and 5. Hey, hey Grant, you got the floor. I promise you, I'm not gonna take it away from you because you said it's, it's uh, Acts chapter two is not the same as Corinthians. It's tongues mentioned in Corinthians two because I think I think I see that there. They're two, so, they're two different things. You don't understand. You won't listen to get understanding. I do. But go ahead. I'm gonna let you. You have the floor. The I do promise, understand. The, prom the, the promised gift of eternal life that Jesus commanded his disciples to receive is a promised gift of eternal life. It is not a promised gift of speaking in tongues. Understand this very, very simple distinction. You have gotten this wrong. The promised gift of eternal life that Jesus commanded his disciples to receive when they're baptized by the Holy Ghost is a promised gift of eternal life. It is not a promised gift of speaking in tongues. The promise gift of so, eternal life what, what is... What scripture are you speaking about? When you say the promise gift of eternal life, what scripture is that? What, what are you talking about? Back in Acts chapter 1, verses 4, when Jesus told his disciples to remain in Jerusalem until you receive the promise that God was sent to you, that I've been telling you about for the last three Acts years. Acts chapter 1 says Those eternal people. life where? What, what verse speaks about eternal life in Acts chapter 1? Exactly. Acts chapter 1. Okay, but if y'all would just... 
I'm a student. All right, you're I'm, a okay, I'm, I'm gonna give you the answer. Question. You All right, here's the answer. Here's the answer. Here's the answer. The promise, the promise gift of eternal life. Let me show you what the promise is. <laughs> hey, hey, what, what the priest is asking you in the, in the verses that you're pulling, what does it mention eternal life? That's what he's asking you. Okay, okay, but let me stop interrupting. Come on, hey, hey, brothers, this, everybody this, relax. This hey, promise relax. gift second, of eternal, second, eternal, eternal this, 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 hey, look, hey, no, one see, there you go, there you go. Look, 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 Everybody stay on mute. The grand got this. He about to show us eternal life in Acts chapter one. Everybody stay on mute. Come on with it. Y'all stay on mute. Stay on mute. Jesus was saying that remain in Jerusalem until you receive the promise that I've been telling you about for the last three years. What was he telling them for the last three years? Those that believe on me shall receive the promise of eternal life by faith. Now, let me show you the meaning of the promise mentioned in Acts chapter 1 verses 4. This promise was mentioned by Jesus to the woman at the well in John chapter 4 verses 14. When Jesus met this woman at the well, he told her, and this verse gives you the meaning of the promise spoken in Acts chapter 1 verse 4, where it says, quote, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him, shall never thirst but the water that i shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life there cometh a woman of samaria to draw water jesus saith unto her give me to drink for his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, <laughs> Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered, and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. You see, that is the promise that Jesus made. I don't see the word promise there. I don't see the word promise there. But anyway, keep going. Come on. Now we see this water being described by Jesus as everlasting life. Now let's go to John chapter 7 verse 37 where we're going to see what this what this water is, this everlasting life is. John chapter 7 verse Hey, real verse quick, 30, real quick, look, one, one, one second, one second. Okay, so Legrand, are you teaching that we can only obtain, uh, hold on please, please, just give me a headache, that we can only obtain eternal life through water baptism and faith through Christ alone. Are those, are those two right? At least those two. Are they right? Yes or no? I, I didn't say anything about water. You didn't see me mention anything about water being commanded by Jesus to receive eternal life. They're baptized by the Holy yeah. Ghost. Right. Okay, John chapter 7, verse 37. This is giving you further understanding that the promise in Acts chapter 1 is eternal life. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So now what is this living water? Here is the connection, the nexus between this living water and the promised gift of eternal life. Verse 39 says, But this spake he of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For
for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So now we see the connection, the nexus, the connection between this living water that, that Jesus said to the woman at the well, this living water is eternal life. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. As stated in, that you receive when you're baptized by the Holy Ghost. Hey, I just I'm wanted gonna, to say I'm to him down. You always do that when, when, when the truth comes, you always move me down. I'm not going to stay here and listen to this crap. 